As the icy winds held outside, and the snow fell gently to the ground, I gathered around the crackling fireplace with a group of friends. It was Christmas Eve, and we decided to share some chilling tales to set the mood for the holiday season. I couldn't resist the opportunity to share a story that had haunted my family for generations. Once, in a small, remote village, there lived an old woman named Agnes. She was known for her eerie stories and strange, ancient artifacts that filled her ramshackle cottage. Agnes claimed that her family had been cursed for centuries, and that every Christmas Eve, something sinister would happen. My great-grandmother had been one of Agnes's close friends, and the story I'm about to share has been passed down through generations. On a frigid Christmas Eve, many decades ago, my great-grandmother and Agnes sat by the fire, much like we are now. As the night grew darker, and the snowstorm raged outside, Agnes leaned in closer to share her most sinister tale yet. It was many years ago when I was just a young girl, Agnes began, her voice barely above a whisper. The village was smaller then, and the people closer-knit. We used to gather around a massive, ancient oak tree on Christmas Eve, right in the center of the village square. Under its twisted branches, we'd light candles and sing carols, celebrating the holiday. The fire flickered, and the room seemed to grow colder. I could feel my heart racing. But on one particular Christmas Eve, a stranger arrived in our village, Agnes continued. He was a tall man dressed in tattered rags, with eyes as cold and empty as the blizzard outside. He wandered into the village, and although he said very little, the aura of dread seemed to follow him wherever he went. My friends and I leaned in, captivated by the story. When the time came to gather around the oak tree, Agnes whispered, the stranger joined us. His presence was unsettling, but we couldn't refuse him on Christmas Eve. As we sang, his voice was like a chilling wind, and his eyes never left the flickering candles. Agnes paused, and for a moment, the only sound was the crackling fire. Then she continued, when the last note of the carol faded into the night, the stranger stepped forward. He reached into his tattered coat and pulled out a small, ornate box, covered in strange symbols. He placed it at the base of the oak tree, and as he did, the ground seemed to tremble beneath us. My friends and I exchanged nervous glances. He opened the box, and a haunting melody filled the air, Agnes recounted. In that moment, a sense of unease swept through the crowd. We watched in horror as the stranger's shadow stretched and twisted, becoming something not quite human. A shiver ran down my spine as Agnes continued her tale. The oak tree, which had stood for centuries, suddenly withered and cracked. Its branches twisted into grotesque shapes, and the candles extinguished themselves, plunging the square into darkness. The stranger disappeared into thin air, leaving only the eerie melody echoing in our ears. Agnes looked at us, her eyes filled with terror. And from that night on, strange and terrible things began to happen in the village. People vanished without a trace, and eerie figures were seen lurking in the shadows. No one could explain it, but the curse had been unleashed. The room felt colder than ever, and the fire's light seemed feeble against the encroaching darkness. Legend has it that every Christmas Eve, the cursed oak tree comes to life, seeking to claim more souls, Agnes concluded. And the sinister stranger returns, playing that haunting melody. No one knows what happens to those who vanish, but the village has never been the same since that fateful night. The weight of Agnes's story settled upon us like an oppressive shroud, casting a pall over our merriment. As the firelight danced on our faces, I couldn't help but shudder, for the tale of the cursed oak tree and the sinister stranger had left us all in a state of eerie anticipation. 
With a shiver, I finally spoke, my voice shaky. But Agnes, what happened to the villagers? What became of the oak tree, and did they ever find a way to break the curse? Agnes leaned in closer, her eyes glittering with a mixture of fear and fascination. No one knows for certain. Some say that the villagers who vanished on that dreadful night became trapped within the twisted branches of the oak tree, their souls forever imprisoned. As for the cursed oak, it's said to wither and die every year, only to be reborn on the following Christmas Eve, seeking to claim more victims. My friends and I exchanged wary glances, a sense of impending doom pressing down on us like the heavy snow outside. The room felt constricting, and the shadows seemed to deepen, as if the sinister stranger from Agnes's story might appear at any moment. As the night continued, we decided to put the story behind us, attributing it to a tale passed down through generations, perhaps exaggerated by time. We resumed our festivities, exchanging gifts, and enjoying the holiday spirit. But as the hours passed and the clock struck midnight, a sense of foreboding settled in our hearts. Outside, the snowstorm had intensified, and the wind held like tormented spirits. In the midst of our laughter and merriment, there was a sudden, bone-chilling silence, broken only by the faintest of sounds, a haunting melody, like a siren's song, drifting through the cracks of the old cottage. Our hearts froze as the eerie tune wrapped around us, pulling us in like a sinister spell. We exchanged nervous glances, realizing that the legend Agnes had shared might not be just a story. The melody seemed to draw us toward the window, our hands trembling as we peered out into the storm. And there, beneath the gnarled branches of a massive, ancient oak tree, we saw him, the stranger. Dressed in tattered rags, his eyes as cold and empty as the snowflakes falling around him, he played the haunting melody on a twisted, ghostly flute. The cursed oak's branches, previously hidden in darkness, writhed and twisted, their grotesque forms illuminated by an eerie, bluish light. Fear clutched at our hearts, and we knew we had to act. We rushed to the door, determined to confront the stranger and put an end to this horror. But as we stepped outside, the snow beneath our feet grew deeper and more treacherous, the wind howling with malevolent force. It was as if the very elements conspired against us. The stranger's music grew louder, filling the night with an otherworldly dread. The cursed oak reached out, its branches like gnarled hands, and the ground shook beneath us. We pressed on, drawn inexorably toward the oak tree, unable to resist the eerie pull of the melody. As we reached the tree, the cursed branches seized us, their grip icy and unforgiving. We struggled, but there was no escape from the twisted limbs that had come to life. The stranger's eyes bore into our souls, and we knew that our fate was sealed. And then, with a final, haunting note, the stranger's flute fell silent. The cursed oak released us, and we stumbled back, gasping for breath. The sinister stranger had vanished, and the oak tree once more withered and died, as if it had never been awakened. We returned to the cottage, shaken and in shock. Agnes sat by the fireplace, her eyes filled with sorrow. You've witnessed the curse, she whispered. The legend is real, and the curse lives on. The village may never find respite from its grasp. The room felt colder than ever, and the fire's warmth couldn't dispel the icy fear that had taken hold of our hearts. The sinister stranger had returned, and we had narrowly escaped becoming part of the village's dark history. As we huddled together, we couldn't help but wonder about the fate of those who had vanished on that fateful Christmas Eve. The curse of the oak tree the sinister stranger, and the haunting melody remained a chilling mystery, one that would haunt our nightmares and leave us in a state of terrifying shock every Christmas to come.